Good evening. Praise the Lord once again. I'm so glad to be here with you all on a Tuesday evening. I uh, want to thank Pastor Mike again for the opportunity to be behind this pulpit and to be able to minister. Amen. I want to speak tonight on uh, signs and wonders, miracles. And uh, it'll probably be more of a teaching than what it will be a preaching. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Some of you I know by now are probably saying, uh huh, you're right, Pastor Miller, right, right, Pastor Charles. Uh, but. Uh, you know, that's just what I feel in my spirit that I should put a, a strong emphasis on uh, attempting to teach us this, this uh, message for tonight. And, uh, you know, signs, wonders, and miracles, uh, they take place and they, trans, uh, they transpire within the church. Uh, they transpire, and God uses His vessels, uh, His children, uh, the ecclesia, outside the walls of the church to be used in having signs, wonders, and miracles, healings transpiring. Uh, I'm stressing the fact that the body of believers, this should be something that we are experiencing. However, in tonight's time on speaking on signs and wonders, miracles, uh, healings, uh, we have to understand another thing. That uh, if, if, if you follow through through Scripture, even going back into the Old Testament, these things occurred many times for the unbelievers to know that God was real. God was real. So, uh, I think... Uh, right from the get-go, I, I, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to be giving a couple warnings in this time on speaking on signs and wonders. And uh, uh, I trust and believe that as uh, you are open for the Spirit of God to minister what He has placed in my heart to speak and minister tonight, that you will receive it. In the spirit by which God desires the message being spoken tonight to be received. Our blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time. I, once again, I ask, Lord God, that you would anoint this earth and clay vessel, Lord God. That, Lord God, your power, the anointing that only you can bring, Lord God, upon uh, these vessels of clay would be upon me tonight, Lord God, to minister the word and minister it in love, minister it in truth, and minister it, Lord God, acknowledging that, Lord God, it must be you, your Son, and your Holy Spirit that is seen in the ministering of the word. And I thank you and I praise you for that in the great and mighty and holy name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. But uh, first I want you to turn to Acts chapter 2. Now we know that Acts chapter 2 is well known for the day of Pentecost. Amen. But uh, Peter ministered a sermon on that day. And in his sermon, we see signs and wonders of being, being ministered. The words 
show up. The phrase shows up there in his message. Uh, we're going to start at um, uh, verse, um, Seventeen, and read on down through verse 22. But there it says uh, in verse 17, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my Servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great. A notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. In verse 22 it says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves know. Where was the church in the day of Jesus? Now when I speak of the church, I'm speaking of the house of Israel. Where were the the Jews, the Israelites in, in those days, particularly amongst their leadership, they had grown somewhat cold in the spirit of the word of God that they had in the old covenant and, and, and in, in the law and the prophets. They become somewhat cold. Uh, cold meaning uh, they, uh, they didn't as much believe the word within the spirit of the word. They preached it by formality. They preached it out of knowledge uh, that was contained to educational knowledge, intellectual knowledge, but not really receiving the spirit by which the books of the Old Testament were given. And they challenged Jesus himself on different uh, issues about who he was, who he said he was. Uh, uh, they became angry because he, he said phrases in his speaking like, you know, I only do the things that I see my father do. I only speak what my father tells me to speak. And in that they realized he was addressing God. Therefore, because they only walked with an intellectual knowledge of things, uh, walking by the letter of the word, the scriptures that they had through the law and the prophets. They did it by the letter. The word of God tells us and not by the spirit of the law. They themselves, their, their forefathers ahead of them, were guilty of 
slaying and killing many of the prophets. Why? Because God used the prophets many times to bring words of correction to the nation of Israel. And you know, I, I'm going to put it out there in a, in a manner that maybe you won't quite understand what I'm saying in the spirit of how I'm saying it. But fools don't like correction. Read the book of Proverbs. It talks about fools and how they despise correction. They, they refuse to receive it. And so many of their forefathers ahead of them were guilty of even slaying the prophets. The law came through Moses... So scripture says, and how many times did the children of Israel even come against Moses? But here it says in the last days, that I will show wonders in the heavens and signs in the earth. And it speaks of how Jesus did many miracles and signs and wonders in his ministry. Yet what did Israel do? What did the religious leaders and the leaders of Israel do with Jesus? They had a kangaroo court, and even when Pilate was ready to release him and say, I find no reason of death for this man, they still shouted and cried out, crucify, crucify. So even the miracles and signs and wonders that Jesus performed, was it not to help the unbelieving believe upon him. Receive him as who he was, the promised Messiah, the Christ. And yet I'm sure in the crowd that cried, crucify him, crucify him, there before Pilate. There were some that had seen some miracles, some healings, some signs and wonders that Jesus had performed. Now I said basically signs, miracles, wonders, and, and things like that are, are for the unbelieving. For us as believers, they are to encourage and strengthen us in our faith. In God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and about being about doing the work of the kingdom of God, which happens to be something I spoke on last week, and I'm not going to take time tonight to rehearse any of that. You'll just have to go on to YouTube, uh, the old Jesus is Lord uh, Ministries International YouTube uh, channel to uh, pull up those messages uh, or go on to the website of the church and, and, and pull them up. But uh, signs and wonders, miracles. You, you see here he's also speaking uh, that which the prophet Joel had, had prophesied about in the last days. 
the prophecy foretelling what would take place and transpire on the day of Pentecost and going forward in the church age, the time of the Gentiles before the rapture of the church. The taking away, the snatching away of Jesus' bride, the ecclesia, the church, out of this world. Amen. I'm trying to uh, stress that a little bit so that you who want to argue, well, you know, the word rapture isn't found in Scripture. Uh, So uh, you do word study, it may be more there than what you believe. Uh, But, uh, uh, you know, no, the word rapture is not per se found as rapture in the the scriptures. But to catch in a way, the word study will take you to the place where you understand why we say rapture. Acts chapter 4 and verse 30. Let's just go back to verse 28. For to do Whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. This is Peter and John after the healing of the lame beggar that was brought and sat at the gate beautiful there at the temple. And That lame beggar was healed who never walked all his life. Now that's a miracle. One who never had strength in their legs and ankles and feet to walk, walk, jumping and leaping. And even more than what was saved on the day of Pentecost, which was 3,000, God saved that day. But there in verse uh, 29 it says, uh, And now, Lord, behold, this is after they returned to their own company, after being uh, uh, warned and beaten and told never to preach again in the, wor- in the name of Jesus, They returned to their own company, fellow believers there. And they shared with them what went on. And and then there was a prayer, a time of prayer about this with the believers. And now, Lord, behold their their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Amen. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, And they spake the word of God with boldness. Amen. They spoke the word of God with boldness. They prayed that God, through the ministering of the word of God, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as being the promised Messiah, the Christ, bold preaching of that word, that God would then move to have miracles, healings, signs, and wonders 
take place after the bold proclamation of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12. And it says, by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. This here is a portion of a verse taken out of the portion of Scripture where the account of what transpired and took place in the first century church there in the book of Acts with Ananias and Sapphira. And while that may have shook up many in the church, God still found it necessary to bring encouragement and to increase faith in the hearts and the lives of the believers that he worked through the apostles' hands performing many miracles, signs, healings, and wonders. Amen. Hallelujah. The apostles, what was their job? Their job was to preach and to proclaim the word of God. Hallelujah. To proclaim Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the preaching of that word, there in verse 12 of chapter 5, it's in the book of Acts, it says, And by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Amen. And you know, as this is going on and the word is still being proclaimed and preached, uh, they're preaching to, to uh, the Jews there in, in Jerusalem, there in, in, in the local uh, area around Jerusalem. They're proclaiming Jesus Christ as Messiah, as the Christ, the promised anointed one. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to key in on a word here sooner or later before we're done here with this message. And then will come a warning or two. Acts chapter 7 verse 36. This here is a message that is taken from Stephen's defense. And he once again is proclaiming Jesus Christ. The religious people were upset with Stephen because he is seeing many saved. God is using him. And there are signs and wonders and miracles being performed. And he's speaking and he's ministering concerning Moses. At the exodus of Israel. Remember God sent him. God met him out in the desert. And God spoke to him from out of a flaming bush. And he sent Moses to deliver the Israelites, his people, out of the bondage of slavery. 
in Egypt. And there he did many signs and wonders through Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh. And we found out that Pharaoh's magicians or sorcerers, however you want to address them, were able to duplicate many of those same miracles and signs. But there were a couple that they couldn't. But God had this ministry that he was doing through Moses at that time with Aaron at Moses' side and the staff of Moses to minister to the unbelievers that God is truly God and there is no greater God than God because he is the only God. To minister to sinners with hardened hearts. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He many times said he released the children of Israel and then he then he he took it back and said, No, he wouldn't allow them to. Until finally. The firstborn of Israel were the firstborn of Egypt, all in the land of Egypt, that did not have the blood upon the doorpost and lintel. The firstborn died. Well, once again, he used many, many wonders and signs to convince them. All believers. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 13. We know here that this is the persecution of the church there in Jerusalem. Starting with verse 5, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of, of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For all clean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and uh, that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. But a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God, and to him they had regard because that a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. With magic. What was Simon involved with? He was being used of Satan, the devil, El Diablo, with lying signs and wonders. Just as Pharaoh's magicians was also able to perform some very astounding things 
that by trickery people believed and received as being real. So Simon the sorcerer, the magician, has them all bewitched. They're following after him. They're, they're giving a lot of regard to him. They're listening to him. They're proclaiming that, hey, he's doing the mighty, mighty works of God. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And Simon, verse 13 says, himself believed also when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, Simon ends up getting himself in trouble. Because, you see, whenever the apostles are sent down from Jerusalem to the city of Samaria, they speak to the people concerning what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the <coughs> infilling of the Holy Spirit. And Simon is amazed at the things he sees and hears. These people able to speak in languages which they never were taught or learned in. Now Simon in his heart never letting loose of the idea of people looking to him and looking upon him as someone great, desiring to be able to compete with the apostles which came down from Jerusalem and Philip. He foolishly says, hey, listen, I'll give you money. If you'll just give me the secret and let me in on how to do this great and wonderful sign and wonder of people being able to all of a sudden have the power of God come down and speak in languages that they were never taught never learned in. Amen. And because of his greedy heart, he is strongly warned by Peter and encouraged that he might repent and go before God and seek mercy concerning the state of his heart and his foolish speaking trying to buy the things of God. I could give a warning in that one, but I don't know that I'll touch that tonight. <laughs> Amen. Acts chapter 8. That's what we were in. Okay, we're going to chapter 14, verse 3. We're going to read 1 through 6 of that portion of Scripture, chapter 14 of the book of Acts. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude of both Jews and also the Greeks believed. Who is this? This is Barnabas and Paul.
But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, Gentiles, stirred up the Gentiles, and made their mind evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of His grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands, or through their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was a great assault made of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully, that is, Barnabas and Paul, and to stone them. And they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and on to the region that lieth round about. Now, back here in verse 3, it speaks how God ministered through the apostles, through their hands, doing many signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. What were they preaching? They were preaching Jesus Christ. They were preaching the good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. Is there a pattern being formed here? I believe so. Romans chapter 15. Paul writing here, the book of Romans. Romans chapter 15, 16 through 20. Possibly I might re- go into 21, verse 21. Romans 15. I didn't use paper clips tonight. So it might be taking me a little bit longer to get through it, but verses 16 through 20. that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ. He's telling them who he is. He's writing to the Romans. He hadn't been there to to, to preach in person yet to them. That I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offerings offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, have therefore, wherefore I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Verse 19, that through many signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Ly- <coughs> Illyricum, I have come fully preaching and have preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. What's Paul preaching? He's preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he's saying, hey, listen, I have been busy ministering in places where others have not went and preached. And he says, I've done that so that I'm not building upon another man's foundation. He's doing that so that many 
who have not heard the good news of the gospel may hear the good news of the gospel and God use signs and wonders in his ministry to convince the unbelieving that what he was preaching was truth. Amen. There's three more scriptures I've written down here. You can check them out for yourself. Look them up. And just read the verses, several verses ahead and, and a few behind and uh, get the text of what's going on. Get the full content of what's, what's going on there in that portion of scripture surrounding these verses. 2 Corinthians 13.12 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, Hebrews 2, verses, uh, chapter, what are, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. At least I hope I have that right. It may be Hebrews 2, ver, uh, verse 24. <laughs> Let's just check that one out so that, so that we have you right. Well, it isn't 24, obviously. Verse 4. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Amen. But I want you to see that there's been a trend here through all these scriptures. The signs followed the preaching and proclaiming with boldness the word of God, the, the good news of the gospel. And it was so... To convince all unbelievers. Many in the church today are caught up with the desire to see many signs and wonders. How are they going to be manifested in the corporate setting within the church? Only with the bold proclamation of the preaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. And preaching Jesus Christ. And there in the book of Romans, it speaks how it was through the power of God that these signs, wonders, miracles, healings take place. It's not of men. Yet we have many in the church today that's running here and running there because they hear that there's mighty signs and wonders may be taking place, that there's healings taking place, and Many are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. We are to be pursuing the signs and wonders, the miracles. But they are to be following us. Amen. Following the preaching and proclaiming of the Word of God. And you, as a layman sitting in the pews and the chairs of your church, can be used by God if you will just press into the presence of God, press into the Word of God and get it hidden in your heart where God can use you in the marketplace, your everyday world around you, to have signs and wonders being proclaimed, what performed before unbelievers. That will soften their hearts and ready their hearts to receive the good, good news, the good word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The warning is don't be pursuing after them 
These things always took place following the preaching and the proclaiming of the Word of God. And you can be used by God if you will just give yourself to pray, fellowshipping, pressing into the presence of God, worshiping, praising Him. And getting into the word of God where you can proclaim that word to a lost and dying world around you. But my warning is, is don't be pursuing after them. Don't be going after them. Leave them follow after you. Proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus' name. I'm not against signs and wonders. But I'm telling you, it's bad whenever you have church people going from place to place all over the, the, the state maybe they live in or, or the, the region of the country that they live in after signs and wonders. When we, all of us, could be used by God for that purpose to see the lost one. But it follows after the preaching of the word. I'm done with my message. I only gave the one warning. And you figure out whenever I was speaking about Simon, the sorcerer, what the other warning is. Thanks for joining us tonight. I trusted my preaching. I know I got a little bit riled up here, <laughs> but I tried to still maintain preaching, what we're teaching tonight about signs and wonders. Go into Scripture and see what it says about signs and wonders and miracles. Jesus himself spoke to the disciples, and he, told, he sent them out, and they, they came back telling them how, you know, hey, people were being healed, and and and. Things were taking place. And he said, hey, don't glorify in that. Glorify in the fact that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that you were, you were equipped, you were ready to preach the Word. Amen. To minister the Word. Hallelujah. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall cast out devils. Wasn't that some of the things that also was being spoken of in the scripture that was shared tonight? Amen. These things should be common amongst us, the church, the ecclesia, you as an individual, child of God. Amen. In Jesus' name, take it with love. I ministered this word. Well, I believe it's a timely word for the church today, and that's what God impressed me to minister tonight. Thank you for being with us. Amen.